So now we're finally going to get to Graham's number in this video, um, as requested. And it comes right out of a version of Ramsey theory. And uh, it's going to be interesting that eventually it'll lead back to numbers that are way, way big, bigger than grams, which we've talked, uh, we've gone way big beyond grams anyway already, but we'll, as we'll see. Okay, so the point is really there's lots and lots of Ramsey theory problems in the general sense. The one I just showed you is a model for lots and lots of different theories. As, as I said, basically any kind of combinatorial theorem that says that as some sort of object gets bigger and bigger, you must find some sort of pattern, or you can't avoid a certain pattern. Um, and so Ron Graham, famous combinatorist, um, best friend of Paul Erdős, um, he was looking at a particular Ramsey theory problem. Let me show you a picture from Wikipedia because they, they do a better job than, than I do. So he was looking at something where you look at, let's say, for example, let's look at a cube. Um, so we're particularly looking at vertices that have a very particular geometric organization. And we're going to pay attention to that. So if you look at the eight vertices of a cube, you can make a complete graph on those, those points. And this is the complete graph. You can see all these connections. And um, then you, cut, you two color it. Here they're coloring it red and blue. And the question is, must you find a, um, a, a monochromatic... Uh, K4 that is all coplanar. So this is exactly an example of a monochromatic K4. So K4, remember, is just where you found all you found four vertices that are all connected with the same color, all the possible interconnections. So you can think again as this is four people who know each other, and for some reason they're standing at the corners of a cube, and they only count if they are coplanar like this. Um, so that's a more stringent condition, and the question is. Um, how, is it still true that as you make n bigger and bigger, that's that going to happen? Oh, yeah. So to make n bigger, it gets a little bit harder to think about because when um, here n is the dimension of the cube. So it's a three-dimensional cube. You've got eight vertices. That's two to the n vertices. They say that right here. Um, and then you can do a four-dimensional cube, a five-dimensional cube, etc. cetera. Um, and that's harder to picture, but it's still not hard to figure out um, what does it mean to connect things, what it means to make the graph, and what the definition of a coplanar um, four-click is going to be. Um, and you can use algebra very easily to define what that means. And the question is, as this n-dimensional cube grows bigger and bigger and bigger, as the dimension of the cube grows, um, must you be forced to find this pattern? It, it's not obvious that you must be forced to find that pattern, but it turns out that indeed you must. Um, and, so let me just write that down. We've got a, an n-dimensional cube. So if you want, know, want to know what I mean by you can just use algebra, all you do is you just look at n-tuples of numbers, each of which are plus or minus 1. Just like the, if you just cut it off here, those are the choices of coordinates of a cube in three-dimensional space whose vertices are at like 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, etc. And this is the thing about going to n dimensions. If you're in coordinates, it's just a bigger list of numbers. Okay, And so we look at all those points. We look at all the possible links between all those points. We select some of them and call them the red links, the red, ver the red edges, and select, and then the other ones are the blue or purple and orange if you've got those color markers. And then you just have to figure out, oh, have I created a red uh, interconnection between four of these vertices that's coplanar? And it's, again, I don't want to go in the algebra, but it's not hard to define what it means by coplanar, just in terms of the, the vertice, the, the coordinates, OK? And so the claim is there is some minimum n, which is the dimensionality, beyond which um, you must have, at and beyond which, you must have uh, a, a monochromatic, either all red or all blue, or whichever two colors you choose, monochromatic coplanar K4. And uh, don't get trip, tripped up in the details of this. It's just a particular pretty, I don't know, it's, it seems like a pretty random seeming randomly theory problem to me. Um, I should look up deeper and see what the, 
what the application would be. Because a lot, lots of graph theory is really important for like interconnecting the internet, things like that. That's a huge graph, basically. Network theory, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so it turns out there is some minimum n. You can't go off forever. And then the question is, what is that mystery number? Well, in the classic Rams, Gramps, sorry, Ramsey theory case, we had this situation where we know that you can't go very far. You, if you do 49 dots, then you must encounter a five click of one color or the other. It's just to actually pin it down to exactly what the minimum number is, what the magic number where you start to have to see the pattern. That's the hard part. But these numbers, 43 and 49, that's not anybody's idea of a large number. Okay. But it turns out, just by modifying the problem a bit, Graham got a problem where they couldn't put a bound on it, at least at first, that was less than just ginormous. Okay. So, um, so let's call that the, the ideal minimum, which we don't know yet. Let's say that's n star. That's where exactly where you have to start getting this coplanar pattern, and anything below n star, you can get a you can be clever enough to color in a way that you don't have to have that. Okay, um, and we don't know this number. This is not known, I don't believe. But in 1971, Graham and Rothschild um, Okay, and again, I'm not telling you much more than is Wiki in Wikipedia for this particular. Um, example, because I'm not an expert. Uh, he said, they said, well, you know what? It's not too hard to show that you can you can avoid the monochromatic pattern up to six, <laughs> dimension six. Um, here's the mystery number that we'd like to find out, but maybe nobody will ever know exactly. Just like with the Graham's, the sorry, the classic Ramsey theorem, we don't know exactly, but we do can show that it's at most some n, which is this is where we'll go back to some of our technology from fast growing functions. It's take 12 and apply some function f, which I'm going to tell you in a minute, seven times. You know, so this is like f of f of f. And we know this is one of the good ways to create really big numbers. As long as f increases its argument, from its output is a lot bigger than its input. Okay, And indeed, this will be one of our old friends, this is 2 n up arrows 3. Okay, so I do two 12 up arrows 3. So the inner thing is two 12 up arrows 3. Okay, finally we're back in our comfort zone here. Well, that's a pretty big number. A 12, two 12 up arrows 3 is not anybody's idea of a small number at any rate. Now it's not getting up to like the epsilon naught kind of stuff, but um, it's pretty big. And then you put that in as the input of f. So you're taking 2 to the 2 12 up arrows 3 3. Aha. And that's just two applications. Okay. So you can see this looks similar to what we were doing a while ago. Back toward the start of the sequence. It's like 2 up arrow 2 up arrow 2 up arrow 2 up arrow 2, two, two, two 12 up arrows 3 and that's on top of an up arrow with a 2 and a 3. And then that's on top of an up arrow with a 2 and a 3, etc. Okay, and then all back, way back to 3. Okay, so that's that's a pretty big number. Now, it's not exactly Graham's number. There's a funny story about that, which I'll, I'll tell you. Um, but it is pretty big. And we can locate it a little more precisely with a few of our other technologies. Turns out that you can... You can narrow it down somewhat precisely with the uh, chained arrow notation. That's always fun. That bound. So remember, this isn't this isn't the exact crossover between being able to avoid the coplanar K4s, monochromatic K4s, and where you have to have them. But it's an upper bound that they got for it, and we'll see that that's actually it's actually been improved quite a bit. Um, turns out that to get the right order of magnitude of that number that they used in the proof. It's, uh, you're talking four chains, so that's decent. That's decently large, okay? Um, now, it's only a two at the end. And remember, the last digit is the most important thing in a Conway chain. So it's only, a, it's only barely into the four chain level. And we're not talking particularly big numbers inside the chains either, okay? But still, anytime you have a four chain that's not all like two, 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 or something like that, 
we're talking a decently big number. Okay. So um, that's the kind of scale that where the original Graham's number comes in. And we'll see that the one that's actually called Graham's number that was popularized by Martin Gardner in Scientific American is, is slightly bigger by our standards, a lot bigger by normal standards. Now, I'll tell you though, as of 2008, this is uh, what Wikipedia has anyway, um, the magic number that we'd like to get where it crosses over into uh, forcing the pattern on us, they, uh, they actually got it down to two triple up six, which, oh, come on, by our standards, that's actually pretty puny. Uh, <clears throat> just a triple up, really? So, in fact, there's actually been a lot of progress on this particular problem. Going from chained arrows to just triple ups is not really, um, is, is a much, much smaller thing. So, I don't know, maybe with some other really break, real breakthrough, maybe somebody will, somebody will figure out exactly what N-star is. I don't know. And notice the, the lower bound has been increased. That might have been more by, by some sort of brute force stuff. Maybe not. Again, when you get up to like, nah, that's probably not brute force because that's, that's a big deal. Because, for example... A, a 13 dimensional cube has two to the 13 vertices, then the edges does that choose two, and then the ways to color that is two to that power. So that's pretty big. So no, I can say it's not brute force. Okay, how does this fit in the fast growing hierarchy? Okay, that original n bound, the f to the seventh power of 12 thing. Okay, well, okay, wait a minute. Um, remember, f, that f of n. It put the n in the up arrow, so in the number of up arrows slot. That's exact, that's essentially what f omega does. Remember f omega, this is where we first really made use of the fast growing hierarchy. The f omega, the clever thing about f omega was we diagonalized and we kind of basically looked at the sequence of two single up three, you know, maybe, and two double up three, and two triple up three, and two quadruple up three, and then we said, ooh, let's make the variable be the number of arrows. So very, very, very roughly, um, on the level of just what stage of the hierarchy it is, that big F function is at the F omega level, the first time we transcended any fixed number of uh, Knuth up arrows. Um, and that's getting into where you need the Conway chains, okay? Um, and I have lots more paper. Okay, yeah, here's my paper. So, um, now, I, and we're doing that seven times. Okay, well, if I repeat an F omega a certain number of times, well, that's basically going to the F omega plus one level. Okay. And roughly of seven, right? F omega, of, F, F omega plus one of seven would really be F omega to the seventh of seven. But the number of times you're repeating it is a heck of a lot more important than the number you put in at the start, even though that matters. And so this is it's more accurate to say 7 and tw than 12. In any case, it's a function that, that's at the f omega plus 1 level, which was a, a big deal to get there when we first learned about it. But it's the very, very start of the interesting part of the fast-growing hierarchy where we started labeling things by ordinals, by infinite ordinals. Okay. So um, what about g? Graham's number itself, the thing that's that's in the Guinness Book of World Records, or at least used to be, or whatever, okay? Because it's definitely not, no longer holds the role of the largest number seriously ever seriously used in a, ever used in a serious mathematical proof. Um, Harvey Friedman might have that <laughs> record. I might even be telling you about it. I don't know. We're coming close. But uh, in 1977, in the Mathematical Games column, the very famous. Uh, mathematical games column in Scientific American, authored by the very famous Martin Gardner. Um, he popularized it as, um, here's an alternate way of saying the bound, and I'm not sure why it ended up mutating into um, this particular thing. It's the same kind of construction. It's take four and apply some function f 64 times, and that f of n was three n up three. You know, if I don't know, it's not responsible for me to guess, but this is six years after the proof. Maybe Knuth just couldn't remember, <laughs> and he was like, uh, something like this, and I'm, I'm sure this is at least big, as big as what we actually wrote in the proof. In any case, it is bigger, because it's not two and, and ups three, it's three and ups three now, and we're applying it a lot more times, not seven, we're applying it 64 times. But still, this is on the order of 
do something at the f omega level 64 times, um, and so that's on the order of f plus f omega plus one of 64. So it, it's really not that big big a difference. So it's a great example of the the perspective we have in this this series. Um, you know, in terms of like how many zeros you'd have if you ha could ever possibly write something like this out, which you can't in the observable universe, um, that's going to have a oh, huge number more zeros than this guy. But they're at the same level of the hierarchy. In particular, f omega plus two of probably you know f omega plus two of three would dominate these guys utterly. Okay, so um, that's the story of Graham's number. Um, and then in the next video, we'll go back to the puzzle, uh, this uh, sequence puzzle from Harvey Friedman, uh, talk about um, the n of k function that came out of that, which is, is again, a Ramsey theoretic idea. That's an n, by the way. Um, and then see where it goes from there.